Matt, how are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well. Can there you we hear go. Me? There we go. Well, Good. first off, uh, I got I can't go any further with the interview without saying happy belated birthday. Oh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> I, I turned 22 for the like the 65th time. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, did you do anything special on your birthday? Or You know, I got to tell you, it was kind of a strange day. Uh, I had just come back from being in Oahu for a few days and the weather was terrible and the day was just a little bit blasey and um, today was much better already. That was yesterday. Okay. So well, you I can think do a redo. You can do a redo. It's this is birthday. my redo. I'm having a redo <laughs> birthday. You you couldn't celebrate it for the month. You've already cut, got cut short a couple of days. So yeah. you know, if you do today, that's okay. And plus, you know, maybe I was really a leap year baby. You never really know. And it could have been today anyway. <laughs> That's very true. Right now, we're talking with Pat Monahan, lead singer of Train and also a member of the Diamond Club. Now, not a lot of people can say they're a member of the Diamond Club. So do you have your plaque? W where is it in your house? Or do you have it? Because you've been doing it a minute. Is it like put up somewhere? Or do you still have it on display? My plaque is uh, is downstairs on my lower level of my house. And we still haven't put it up or anything. It's a strange, it's a strange thing. Uh, I'm really funny about putting up things like this is my studio. So I put like the Drops of Jupiter album cover up there. I see that. You got lights but, and everything hanging. But I suppose I should maybe try to figure out uh, how to put that in my studio. I'm, I'm just funny about it. When people come into an environment, I want them to feel like it's about them, not me. And, and even when they're in my house. Well, that's true. But, but Pat, 10 million, I, I mean, come on now. Like a lot of people can't, can't say that. And with the internet, you know, they've already Googled you anyway. So it's not like they don't already know. Well, it's, <laughs> I talk about it the entire time they're in my house. <laughs> there's a, there's a way to do it that you can brag, I guess, without bragging. But anyway, oh, it is a really cool honor to be in that, in that small elite uh, club. But um, yeah, sometimes it's all about what's next. Unfortunately, I don't celebrate as much as I probably should. No, but hey, you know what? You don't have to worry about it because your career has been going on for a very long time. We're coming mm -hmm. up on 20 years, Dross yeah. of Jupiter, which is one of my favorite songs. And I know that's very oh, personal. It, you know, you use it to, to cope with getting through the passing of your mom and it's helped so many people. But it's one of those songs because we still play it here at Mix 107.9. It still sounds great. It still fits. You know what I mean? Mm. We're in 2022. Yeah. And have if you were to come out with it now, it would still do great. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Well, you know, this new album, AM Gold, is kind yes. of, a, it's a throwback album too, which fits uh, even before a Drops of Jupiter kind of sound. And so we'll see if that can last the test of time as well. It, it sounds like old school, you know, like there's a lot of uh, singer songwriter on it, but there's also disco and R and B and just all the all the great moments of the past. Well, I, I would can, can we? Is it fair to say you're a songwriter at heart? Is it fair to say that? Can we say? Yeah, that? I think I think so. That's that's what I am in my in my real soul, I suppose. Okay, so five years waited five years to have this new album which is coming out and you're going to be making your way to charlotte too on june 30th at the pnc music pavilion you got a world yep. tour to support this amazing album that's uh also is going to be coming out too on may 20th yeah um, talk about like was it the pandemic that pushed it back for the five years or was that part of the plan like you want to make sure you have really good songs and i don't know if the pandemic made you go no let's let's go back to the drawing board yeah, we kind of flipped because we put a greatest hits out and then we were, I was writing a record and then the pandemic shut everything down and my whole record sound shifted okay. where I had to start writing virtually instead of, I was going a lot to Los, Los Angeles and writing with like the big writers and I realized that the record I was making was not the record that I was supposed to make. And so it took another okay. two years for me to write the record I was supposed to. I have a good friend here who I golf with who uh, <laughs> used to play for the Seahawks. Okay. And he played me these songs while we were golfing. And I was like, who is this? It sounds like it's like from the 60s. And he's like, oh, no, man, these are like 22 year old kids. And I was like, <laughs> whoa, I need to be doing that. And so it really was a big flip for me. And that's why this new record, I uh, I feel like, is going to be much more appropriate for Train fans and hopefully people that even are new to Train. And 
when we come to Charlotte, we'll be with Blues Traveler and my good friend Jewel. And I exactly. think it's going to be a lot of fun. Because I was going to ask that you you already kind of answered that question. I was going to say we got Jules, Jewel yep. and uh, Blue, Blues Traveler on the yep. ticket. Are they personal friends? Because they're kind of in the same time frame. You know, yeah, that's as, right. As, so how did that go about? Was it just a phone call? Hey, Jewel, um, why don't you come on the road with me? Or well, I think the kind of record we were making, and plus Jewel and I know each other, we're managed by the same people, and uh, she sang on one of our songs, and I sang on one of hers, and we just were like, why don't we put a tour together where we can spend, you know, the summer singing each other songs, and she's really lovely, and I don't have a lot of music friends, most of my friends are like from golf, because musicians want to talk about themselves all the time, I would know, and, uh, <laughs> and and Jules a very uh, she's not like that. She's she's uh, really sweet and really talented and easy to be around. So uh, that made a lot of sense. And then I've known John Popper for a long time, and he was a great addition to the whole thing. So this throwback record is also a throwback to like the beginning of when we all started. Now, Pat, you've you've said it a lot, so I guess I should see you on the PGA tour. Where where does golf fall? Yeah. Is it kind of close with the songwriting and the music? Is it like you know? No, it's a, it's a good, it's, a it's a good escape for me from it. You know, like I'll work for five days and then being able to go out and hit a couple balls with some friends takes me out of, because, you know, you can take yourself too seriously as anything, as a yes, songwriter or a golfer or a parent or a whatever. And it just is, it's helpful to be around a very modest making game because it will humiliate you and your <laughs> friends will help with that. They will all, all they would like to throw out those jabs so that you feel like maybe I'm not the greatest songwriter in the world. And then you go back to reality. It's helpful. Now, is it addictive? I hear people say, like, once you get started with golfing, it really is addictive. It's a type of yeah. sport that you just can't help yourself. Well, it's fun to watch all these NBA and NFL and MLB guys come out <laughs> and 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 then they're they're really put in their place. Wow. By this game, you know, mm -hmm. because they are such elite athletes and then they come out and golf teaches them that they still have a long ways to go with uh, with something else. Well, let me ask you this question right here with you being a songwriter. A lot of songwriters say that when you when you write a song, you feel like once you share it with the world, it's no longer yours. Do you do you have that same philosophy as well? Yeah, I get that. That really makes sense when I hear people talk about that. And I and I think like drops of jupiter and hey soul sister and and these songs that i wrote about very personal things they weren't mine anymore after that because and and the reason i think that happens is because uh let's say let's say you madison you have an idea of what a song is and it doesn't have to be a train song but it could be somebody else's that's your song and the songwriter doesn't always have to be right it you know like it may have come from a different place but that song's about what you want it to be about now not not what it was intended to be unless you're a kind of a strange person and you want it always to be about what you wrote it about but for me it's like if if drops of jupiter is about a breakup that you know reminded you of when you were in high school then that's exactly what that's about well, that's why it's still going strong 20 years later, because it means different things to different people. And it was actually, I was listening to a podcast and you're being interviewed and that's when you share it. I was like, oh, because like mm. you said, for me, it meant something else. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. someone just told me that there's a big TikTok debate happening about Drops of Jupiter currently that has like 7 million views about what, it, what the song is really about. And so... Uh, that's kind of fun. I mean, because TikTok rules the world, right? Yeah, right. You get everything. How to cook, how to like decorate your house, yeah. uh, how, how to be a Pat Monahan, which you can find too on TikTok. Speaking of TikTok, <laughs> what, what advice would you give to up and coming artists? Because, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm a vampire, but I've been around a minute before the social media. <laughs> um, so now people can just like, they don't have to go through. Yeah. The, they can just put it out, record it on their iPhone and then put it out there so what well, it's still you it have? still takes people to connect to it and that's the hard part like uh i don't really know how to advise kids on how to do this because it's so different than when i started there were no cell phones when i started exactly my, ch my children are like what 
You know, my my wife told my daughter that she didn't get a cell phone until she was in high school. Same and, here. Same and my here. daughter couldn't believe it. it. She was like, <laughs> how did you survive? And uh, this is a different world. So I don't know how to advise them. They may, I maybe need their advice. Like, how do I get on TikTok? That's very true. Before we wrap it up, not only now, do you, do you, you're a golfer, so we'll see you on the PGA circuit uh, in another life. Uh, you're a songwriter. <laughs> You're now dabbling into acting and you were doing, you did a Hallmark move. So how do you kind of get like, yeah, uh, you know, we'll see if it's the right part. Yeah. I I've done some stuff with CBS on some television shows and uh, we have a, a Christmas album called Christmas at Tahoe. So we delivered it to Hallmark years ago and we were like, what do you think about making a movie about this? And they were like, we love it. And it took about two years for them to come up with a great script and, we shot it in Canada because Tahoe was uh, dealing with some fires at the time. And uh, I had the best time and they had the best time with me for some weird reason. And I might be the new face of Hallmark. I'm pretty sure I am. Oh, that's also, I was going to say, if you had a dream uh, person to work with in the acting field, who would that be? You know, I mean, it's hard to beat guys like Denzel Washington and uh, you know, I, I think of people like uh, Matt Damon as he looks like he'd be fun to work with. Uh, I'm super in love with my wife, so I don't really fantasize about actresses that that might inspire me. But uh, all those guys, I mean, Daniel Day-Lewis is, you know, he's so special. So if I could ever get an opportunity to just be around those people, that'd be mm -hmm. pretty fun. Well, because know, I look knows? and I look just like George Clooney, which is super weird. People think that we're like, Brother. I can see it. I can see it. You know, get out of here. Yeah, no. I'm kidding. Are you serious? Get I out. can see a little bit of it. I'm talking like back in the um days when he was on ER. I can see, I can see a little bit. You of can't it. see it. I can't see it either. It was a uh, <laughs> thank you so much for chatting with us. Can't wait to see you. Look forward to seeing you when you make your way to the Queen City. We're yeah. so glad to have live events again and have concerts yeah. again and we're just going to have a great time and i can't wait to see you when you come to our city i can't wait to i have a lot of family in north and south carolina so they'll be all all at that charlotte show with us so oh so is it going to be a pat section will you will you big pat like section yeah <laughs> well pat might have him trained he's going to be like i said in the queen city on june 30th at the pnc music pavilion new album coming out called am gold on may 20th and be on the lookout because you're going to hear the, the, the song. Can, can we play it? Does that work for you? Is that okay? Can we play it? If, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love it. <laughs> we'll, we'll play it a couple of times. It's a good song. So we'll get that out there. So Pat, Great. thank you so much for spending time with us. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.